What is up guys, it's your boy Nistro here and today we got ourselves a shark dino rabbit deck profile. So I started out with original sharks and uh, honestly they weren't that fun. Uh, I thought they would be better. Uh, I didn't see Silent Angler as much as I thought I would. And the deck is uh, kind of lackluster. But um, I was watching a, a Hats Mania video. I'll leave his channel in the description and uh, he, he did a deck profile of how he played um, shark and dino rabbit mixed together and uh, I found it real interesting and uh, the thing that really got me is the fact he was playing triple seven colored fish and then I, after that I was like okay I have to try to stack out so I mixed it up myself but um, as I said before I will leave a original link in the description so uh, starting off we have three megalo smasher x and three seven colored fish your normal monsters that are your rescue rabbit targets um, Mega Smasher X is here because he's both a water and a dinosaur, so you can make Lagia and Bahamut. Um, you have options for both, and 7 Code Fish because he's a level 4 fish, and another normal target for a rescue rabbit in case you tend to top deck both your Mega Smashers. Uh, one Saber Shark, he didn't play it, but I just play it because I still want to use a Crystal Zero and Crystal Zero Lancer. Um, I haven't necessarily pulled it off yet, but I'm still hopeful, so we'll see what the future holds. Uh, triple Double Fin Shark, he's kind of like a wolf bark for uh, fish type monsters, he's special summoned in defense mode and you can't special summon monsters other than water for the rest of the turn. Um, but he's a great normal summon and uh, he's more of a mid to late game type of thing but uh, he's still a good card. So Triple Tin Goldfish, uh, Tin Goldfish, in, in my shark build I, I actually didn't consider it, uh, running Tin Goldfish which I find kind of funny. Because it's like such a good card. It's like I was only thinking about fish monsters and I wasn't thinking about like other monsters other than that. So I didn't play 10 goldfish. But now I see it's a real good um, option in the deck. It opens up a lot of plays. And uh, it's a pretty amazing card. It's always has always has been and a staple in rank 4 decks pretty much. So Silent Angler, uh, he's kind of like your keys on. You, you don't want to like, you, you don't see him as much as you want to see him. But um He's still pretty amazing when you open him, um, and also uh, his effect is that if you control a water type monster, you special summon this card from your hand, but you can't special summon monster from your hand for the rest of the turn. So it doesn't stop your exceed plays, but just just know you can only summon one of these per turn, pretty much. And if you have a tin goldfish, use tin goldfish first before summoning your silent angler. So one rescue rabbit for your normal monsters, one maxi, and one Lunlight black sheet because uh, in Hats Mania's video he used a combo with uh, King of the Swamp and Palmer's Asian to go to Norton. And uh, although um, I do think that combo did does work, I, was ju I just felt safer playing Lunalite Black Sheep. You can honestly play both. Um, if you can see here, I played three Tenki for this one Black Sheep. Um, and if you look at the side deck, I was considering putting a single copy of Zoom Monsters uh, in the deck, but I ended up just not doing it and just playing the Black Sheep. It, it did help, but it doesn't really do much for the deck. And sometimes it even uh, took a step back rather than a step forward. And uh, I'll, I'll talk about that later. Uh, Unexpected Die sums out your normals. Uh, Triple Instant Fusion, uh, Rare Fish, and Norton are pretty amazing. And Theseus, in case you need to go into a Vermilion Dragon mech. Uh, single Raigeki, because Raigeki's a thing. Moria Greed, uh, in case you get two water monsters that you don't like, or in case you feel like uh, you, you need more uh, different cards from your deck, uh, Moria Greed definitely helps. Soul Charge, Soul Charge is stupid. Now, uh, Rank Up Magic 7 1, uh, I, I do could, like, I kind of want to keep it a little anime like, so I, I, I kind of just ran this for fun. Um, I only really pulled it off like once or twice. The thing is, is that it sucks when you draw this outside of your draw phase. Because then it's pretty much useless. It's, it's You either use this as like set bait or you use it for twin twisters. It's like you don't use it for anything other than that. And uh, some and there was even one time where I did the whole black sheet combo. Go into Norton. Norton summon out another Bahamut. And then use Fusion Substitute. Send Norton back and draw a card. And I drew into the seventh one. It, it, it was all a waste. I, I could have just kept my Bahamut and my Toad on my field. Instead of going into another Bahamut and another Toad. And using Norton. Well, you, you don't, you're not really using Norton because you send it back to the extra deck, but it's, uh, 
it was kind of a waste. I, I kind of just waited and then drew a 7-1 next turn and then had a free 1-on-1 -on, -one on board. But, you know, that's life. Um, so next we have Fusion Substitute. It's for the Norton combo. Uh, it's self-explanatory. It, it's just, uh, it works nice with uh, Bahamut and Toad because uh, Bahamut brings out Toad and you have two Exceed monsters and then it's a free Fusion Substitute off of one Bahamut, so in case you draw it. But um, it's more of something like, uh, let's say you have, like let's say you went off and you had two Bahamuts and two Toads. Um, if you use Fusion Substitute and then you use Norton then, um, you would then have access to a third monster. Um, but if you just have Bahamut and Toad and it does nothing for you other than like draw one, it, it, it just replaces itself. That's, that's all it really does. Um, double Twin Twister, it's back row, you know, and triple Tanky for the Black Sheep, because um, this deck does want to make uh, combos as fast as possible. If, if there were any water Beast Warrior type monsters, I, I think this would be a better card to play, but I don't know if there are any. I don't think there are. But um, if you feel like playing Zeus, you could definitely um, do that in this deck. You could definitely... But uh, <laughs> Zodiacs into this deck if you wanted to. Um, you could probably take out Saber Shark and like uh, one copy of Double Fin Shark, and you would be able to put like two zoos in there, maybe a rat, and then you could take out Seventh One and like maybe a Marae. Yeah, this deck could definitely work with zoos. Huh? <laughs> shark, uh, Dino Rabbit, Shark Zoo. Uh, <laughs> that's that's going to be the new meta. Uh, anyway, um, one Quaking, because. Uh, it's a lot more efficient. It's still, I still feel that this is the best Mirror Force out there right now. Um, regular Mirror Force is dead, and I don't really like storming. The concept of sending monsters back to the hand, unless they're really, unless I'm really facing a fo uh, extra deck focused deck, I, I, I really don't like that idea. But um, one torrential, uh, double strike, and one warning. Uh, pretty much the Solemn Brigade and Torrential is just here in case your opponent decides to go off. So, uh, your instant fusion targets, you have Decius, uh, Norton, and Rare Fish, because, you know, Decius is just here for Vermilion, and Norton and Rare Fish are here because they're amazing. Um, Rare Fish is, uh, another level 4 fish, so, um, if you ever double fin shark and you don't have... Another fishing grave, I guess. You just ra bring back rare fish. I don't know. Um, Vermilion, because he just pops a card by banishing Theseus. That's that's all he's here for. It's because he only, he's a level nine that only requires two, so he sees a lot more play because of that. S simply because of that. Uh, so Crystal Zero Lancer and Crystal Zero. If you don't know what they do, okay. So you summon him by using Saber Shark. So Saber Shark targets itself and another fish type monster. And twice per turn, you can either increase or decrease the level. So you can make both him and another fish monster level 5 and then go into Crystal Zero. You're not going to use Crystal Zero's effect. Although, one time, uh, I summoned out Crystal Zero and this guy tried to bottomless me. Now, her effect is during either player's turn, it's a quickie. You can detach one exceed material from this card. Target one face a monster on the field. His attack becomes half his current attack. So she can dodge bottomless trapple. Uh, <laughs> fun fact. If you use her effect on herself. Uh, it, it's, it's not very, uh, it's not broken, but it definitely helps. Um, and then her full armored form, which you can just overlay on top of her, which Black Ray Lancer should have been, should have been able to do, but for some reason they made it so Black Ray, like, full armor Black Ray Lancer can't go over Black Ray Lancer. Like, why not just say, overlay this card on top of a rank 3 Aqua type Exceed, or a rank 3 Black Ray Lancer, or a rank 3 Water, you know? Like, why not just give us the option to use Black Ray Lancer? Um, so what she does is that you, you see someone are using any rank 5 water. So if you go 101 to 7th one, and you pull a C101 to Silent Honor Dark, and uh, let's say that he comes back and you have nothing to do with him, like let's say they don't have a monster for you to absorb, you can just overlay into a Crystal Zero Lancer and uh, have yourself a stronger monster on the board. Well, not stronger. It's going to be 100 attack less if you do that, but... Since it gains 500 attack for each uh, attached to it, that's why it has a low base stat of 22. 
and uh, if this face-up card would be destroyed, you attach one extreme from this card instead. So uh, normally you would have uh, three materials on Crystal Zero, I mean two materials on Crystal Zero, so it would be overlay on top of Crystal Zero, so that would be three materials for your full armored, and then three materials would make it a 37 hitter, so if it gets destroyed, you detach, it becomes 32. It's funny that it is the opposite of a card like Battling Box or Lead Yoke, where when it would be destroyed, it increases its own attack instead of decreasing. But Battling Boxers suck, so <laughs> let's not even talk about that. Uh, once per turn, you detach one extreme material from this card. All face-up monsters your opponent controls have their effects negated until the end of the turn. It's the main reason you play her. Um, she, it, it's... I never got the chance to use her, as I said. Like, I probably only used her once, and then the one time I would have been able to use her, the guy scooped before because I already had game, so... This this is more this is more closure for me not being able to build an actual shark deck, and not and I don't think you should play these two in reality. You have you should probably play like a number thirty seven or better exceeds out there. Now C one hundred one again you don't have to play him as well. You can play what regular one hundred one if you want, but he's kind of outdated right now. So, but C one hundred one uh, does um, allow you to uh, absorb special monsters your opponent controls, attach it to him as a team material. And his second effect is kind of what um, makes him fun. Uh, when he's destroyed and sent to the graveyard while he has a team material, you special summon this card from your graveyard and then gain life points equal to his original attack. So you, you special summon them and you gain 2800 attack. The only the only real cost is that 101 has to be in the graveyard. So if he gets destroyed, 101's in grave, he comes back. You gain 2800 life points. Now, he would have to steal another team material for you to activate that effect again. So it's it, it's a uh, it's not a loop per se, but it definitely is uh, pretty fun when you get to bring him back and gain life points for it. Especially if you uh, soul charge and then he gets destroyed and then you gain back those life points. That will be amazing. So double Bahamut Shark um, because you play your Toads and it's your easy ex easiest exceed to go into. All your level fours are water except for Rescue Rabbit and who even like. Who even uses Rescue Rabbit itself for an exceed? Like, come on. Uh, Lagia, because you are playing the Megalo Smashers, um, and they're, they're, this this deck could make boards with a uh, double Toad and a uh, Lagia, so it definitely is something to consider. 1-1-1 uh, one, one, one for the Baryon. Uh, Gastel, because it's Gastel. Uh, you could switch this up to a Tornado Dragon if you want. <laughs> Actually, uh, switch up one of these three big guys. So, like, these three big guys, you can put number 37, uh, maybe a third Toad, and um, Tornado Dragon. So, for the rank 5, for the two rank 5s and full armor, you can take those out. Um, or, if you want to play Zoo, you know. Abyss Dweller, uh, he's amazing because he helps your water monsters gain attack, and he negates graveyard effects, so that's always a good thing. And double Toad to finish the deck profile off because, you know, obviously Bahamut summons him. I don't need to explain it. Uh, anyway, uh, as I said before, I will leave a link to Hacks Mania's uh, deck profile in the description. Um, maybe even a link to his channel if I'm um, not that busy. But um, expect to see the dual video of this deck up soon. And uh, I will see you guys later. Peace.